the target uh, or the objective, let's call it that, that uh, WHO and others have set of 40% vaccinated by the end of this year is obviously the right thing to call for because we know that the pandemic will only be in the end under control if we can vaccinate people across the world. The reality is a very different one. Take a country like Nigeria. Nigeria at the moment um, would have to vaccinate more than two and a half million people a week in order to arrive at a 40% vaccination rate by the end of this year. That would be a 5,000% increase in the number of people vaccinated. It just gives you a sense, first of all, that the logistical aspect is a very significant challenge in actually vaccinating. But the absence of being able to get the vaccine has been the greatest setback. And so the United Nations, the African uh, acquisition of vaccines, trust, um, COVAX facility, these were attempts to help the world manage what was inevitably going to be a quantity constrained moment to not become also a revelation of just sheer inequality or the power of wealth to produce and buy. But interesting enough, as the G20 summit is uh, going to meet in a few weeks' time, as member states meet here in New York at the General Assembly, vaccine inequity is now top of the agenda. UNDP is particularly focused at the national level in helping countries to, first of all, prepare uh, for the rollout, to help governments to have the investments made in order to not just have the vaccine arrive at an airport, that is in some ways the next easiest thing to do, but then to have the distributional and uh, managerial and logistics elements also in place. Things don't often happen in a production line sense in a General Assembly week, but this is where diplomacy can unlock uh, opportunities. And certainly in my meetings this week and next week, um, COVID-19 will be a very significant part of the discussion. But with UNDP, our focus is particularly on what happens next. UNDP has been a strong advocate of an SDG push scenario coming out of COVID. This is not a moment in which to go back to the economy of yesterday. We already had significant challenges. This is an opportunity that is about how do we build tomorrow's economy. It's about the future of development, where governance, social protection, greening of our economies and digitalization provide enormous opportunities for advancing economic development and human development.